Helpful watercolor tips and tricks lesson 4. Painting stems with watercolors, showing you how to paint six different stems. An outline drawing is done for all six stems. With an elastic eraser, I'm removing the excess amount of graphite off the paper. You can have this reference and line drawing downloaded, link is down below if you want to follow along with these stems. Also be very careful with graphite marks, we don't want them to ruin our watercolor painting at the end, those graphite marks can be really visible even through many layers of watercolors if that is the light subject and i'm especially erasing graphite marks that are from the lightest parts of the subject which is on the left don't push too hard with an eraser and remove the dust from the paper with a bigger wider brush don't press too hard, you can easily damage paper. Now we can mix watercolors. I will not be too concentrated on the right color, I'm showing you the technique and approach. For the first two stems, I'm mixing perlin green with sap green, sap green with lemon yellow, adding a little bit of alizarin crimson, and for the third brown, very thin stem, I'm using Indian yellow, alizarin crimson and sap green. Mixing the brown color, adjusting colors by adding a little bit more of alizarin crimson or Indian yellow or sap green. Also adding lamb black for darker browns and more alizarin crimson on the side. Now we can start painting. I will show you first three stems that we pre-mixed colors. Starting with the first one, which is on the left, with a round synthetic brush, I'm applying water layer to the stem. Taking very transparent amount of watercolor mix, sap green, and perlin green. I apply more to the right side, which is the shadow part. And then with clean and dry brush, I smooth the watercolor layer towards the outer edges on the left and on the right. One little recommendation, if you know that you tend to go over the edges of the more finer details or thinner details when you are transferring your line drawing transfer it a little bit smaller in size then you will be more freer with painting and applying watercolors i know that i tend to go a little bit over the edges that's why i always paint my stems thinner it's better to make them and paint them thinner rather than much thicker and then you go even half a millimeter or one millimeter over the edge line and then you can finish with a very thin looking uh, stem what it's not the best solution for a very beautiful flower now i'm adding darker green color mix with a finer tip brush to the right side of this stem because that side is in the shadow and with the clean and dry brush I smooth the applied layer very lightly we, I'm not rubbing my brush against the paper all movements are very light and transparent we are building volume and saturation gradually while the first stem is getting dry I need that layer to get dry I'm on to the next stem starting again with watery layer using round synthetic brush 
and I apply a mix of sap green with lemon yellow because the second stem is more to yellowish green color mix but again I'm not here to be very precise with the color I'm more showing you here the approach the technique how to paint stems and again with finer tip brush I'm mixing darker green mix with my yellowish green mix and with fine and thin brush strokes adding shadow area. The amount of watercolor that I apply is very transparent. We are building saturation gradually, it's very important. If we will go straight very dark with the first layers we will end up with flat looking stems and we don't want that. We want also stems to be realistic and perfect. Even if the main subject is maybe flower or leaves and then it is very visible when the artist is giving just few brush strokes to the stem, it can ruin the whole painting. Even the beautifully painted flower can be ruined with poorly painted stem. Now I'm going to the very thin stem. How I approach very thin stems is I still have a very transparent layer first applied. I'm not watering here because this is a very tiny area. I go straight with a very light brown watercolor mix or it can be a very thin green stem. The color here isn't important. The importance is the saturation of the color. In my case it is very light. I apply the whole stem with fine watercolor brush and then I take a darker color and go on the right side which is in the shadow and with a very fine line I apply shadow area. Even for such a thin stem or subject it can be leaf stem, flower stem. We still need those contrast between light and dark. Slowly, accurately applying watercolors with very small and fine brush. Zooming a little bit closer, how I paint, very lightly. The lightest part is very transparent and more saturated is on the right where the shadow area is. No rush here, even the smallest sections, the smallest details in the big compositions are important. If you feel the urge to paint something quick, it's better to take a break, come back with a relaxed and fresh look and continue slowly and gradually. Now that my all three stems are completely dry, I'm removing the other parts of graphite marks that are still visible. I don't want them to be seen, but please be careful with the layer, it should be completely dry. If it will be a little bit moist, you can only damage paper. So with the raising, be very careful, be sure that your surface is completely dry. And with bigger brush I'm removing the dust. If you need to wait a really long time for the layer to get dry, it only can mean that you're using too much water. In my case I need to wait 10-20 seconds for the layer to get dry, that's how small amount of water I'm using. With a round synthetic brush I take a little bit darker watercolor mix. I remove some excess amount of watercolors on the paper towel that I always hold in my other hand. And again from the right side I apply darker layer. Still transparent, it's about layering, it's about building that volume gradually. I'm mixing layers of finer brush strokes with more smoother brush strokes. I'm blending all those layers together creating a texture and volume. And also my recommendation, don't go with too much layers in one go. 
apply a few brush strokes, leave it to dry, then come again. That's why I'm painting three stems so I can jump one from another to another waiting when the first one is dry, getting dry I am painting the second one then the third one and then coming back to the first one with the fine brush strokes applying shadow area again as you can see from my color palette I'm loading my brush just the very tip of my brush with very small amount of watercolors and water is also very small amount the color palette is almost dry only pigment visible and when I take my brush to water jar I just dip a very tip of the brush in water then go to color palette apply watercolor brush with watercolors and then go to the painting fine brush strokes be very careful gradually slowly Constantly checking and looking in the reference. How am I doing? Is everything correct? What kind of texture? Color intensity, but we don't go straight in the first layer with that intensity. I know it's very tempting That you see that after a few layers of transparent painting nothing looks like reference Don't worry in watercolors and realistic painting. It's all about layering you can't have with watercolors a finished looking result after one or two layers this is the other medium oils acrylics even gouache watercolor is a very transparent medium and we need to keep that transparency in order so that the light can shine through all those layers and after many layers we have a beautiful vibrant realistic looking painting if we will go with very dark and saturated watercolors we will only black block sorry block the light source and the painting will look flat it's hard for beginners especially for beginners to keep that calm mind and patience to work for many layers because they after a few layers that see they see that nothing is working out like it sh like it looks in the reference don't worry, just keep painting, keep going, add another layer, but be transparent gradually, patiently, and you will see that after a few layers, everything starts to work out. That's the beauty of watercolors. You can go really realistic, super detailed, but it takes time and patience. I still add on the right side. I don't touch at this point the left side, which is in the light it's important to keep light area light we see in the reference that we have quite a strong contrast between light and shadow that's why I'm more concentrated on the shadow area at this point and not touching the light area so I'm not losing the lightest part closer look to the very fine and thin stem painting with the very tip of the brush very accurately slowly carefully adding a darker color be very careful with the outer edge lines don't go over them we in this case we have a very fine and thin stem we need to keep that thin look
and another layer of darker watercolor mixes careful painting around the little areas that I have on the stem everything is done with the very tip of the brush I'm not touching the lightest area here as well keeping the lightest area light so that the contrast is between light and dark is visible that's how we will create this look that it's a round subject now with round synthetic brush I'm taking a very transparent amount of light watercolor mixes and going over the whole area of the stem. I'm smoothing the layer underneath and giving extra watercolor layer to the lightest part as well. After a few layers of working only on the shadow part, I'll take a look at the reference, compare and I notice that my lightest area is too light that's why I can add a very transparent and watery amount of watercolor mixes to the whole area of the stem. To the second one as well, it is more yellowish green and I'm adding the watercolor mix which is more closer to the yellow side. adding Indian yellow to my color palette and with a finer tip brush I'm adding this watercolor mix to my brown stem to give a more warmer color to the shadow area And another layer of more darker watercolor mixes with fine brush strokes. Applying this layer after the previous layer is completely dried and I can make more crisper, finer brush strokes. Everything is built gradually, slowly. Now I'm Washing my brush, cleaning in paper towel and carefully smoothing the applied layer so that those lines are not super crisp but still a little bit visible. With round synthetic brush I can beautifully smooth leaving some finer brush strokes visible, blending everything together, making more natural looking, more realistic. closer look of how I paint working on the right side of the stem adding more contrast more watercolor layers we can see in the reference photo that there are lines that this stem is with long and thin lines and between those darker lines there are lighter lines adding lamp black to my brown color mix and a little amount of Indian yellow. Now with the very tip of the brush I'm adding more finer and crisper darker details. Making that right side more darker more contrasty 
and the light side is kept light I'm not touching it and I already have the look of a round subject a realistic look this even little very thin stem has volume with very light amount of watercolors I'm applying very thin line on the left side moving to the first stem which is the thickest here in this lesson I want you to so show you different size of stems different textures and colors approach is quite similar to all of them but there are some minor details starting with water layer and with transparent amount of watercolor mixes Moving to the next stem, while well, the first one is drying, I can paint the other one, which is fifth, and it is an old flower stem, which is already turned completely dead. It's brown and with spots and textures. Also starting with water layer and then using brown watercolor mixes, applying very thin layer. Before painting details, we need to build the background color. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm adding a transparent color for the whole stem, then the darker amount of watercolors on the right side, which is in the shadow. I'm building the volume first. What we see first, beautiful details, we paint last ones. Now the green stem is dry and I can start by adding more darker layer, more finer brush strokes to the shadow area of the stem. approach is the same it's only a little bit different texture on the stem mixing finer brush strokes with smoother brush strokes I'm using two brushes mostly for all my 90% of all my tutorials I'm using only two brushes finer tip brush and a round synthetic brush. Now leaving the green stem to dry, moving back to the brown one, which is now completely dry and with a little bit darker brown watercolor mix, I'm painting those very fine lines which appear in the reference photo. I'm constantly looking at reference. Even after painting a long time and looking at the reference, I still look at the reference. 
if you want to get a realistic painting you can't go without the reference it's all about looking exploring the more we look the more we start to see that's how our eyesight works adding finer brush strokes to those beautiful lines that we see on the stem. More darker lines are in the shadow area and lighter lines stay in the lightest part. Even those lines are in different tonal values. Adding more another layer of finer brush strokes to the shadow area gradually building that volume gradually building saturation and darkness and contrast between light and dark we have a nice background color we have a three-dimensional look for the stem we can start adding spots spots are really the last ones to add here again darker spots are in the shadow and lighter spots will be in the lighter area always keeping that tonal value in places don't go get to carried away with adding spots and adding them everywhere in the same color tone lighter area lighter spots darker area darker spots slowly gradually painting giving as much attention to the smallest parts like stems in this case as you would be painting for the flowers or leaves I'm following here the reference, but I'm not recreating 100% accuracy with these spots. It would be too much time consuming, but I'm getting the idea. I'm getting the characteristic looks of these spots and how this stem looks and recreating that on my painting. This is a lesson on the approach of painting stems you can be more into detailing more into layering i'm showing you the way and my limit is the time how much i can show you in one lesson it would be crazy to have lessons for three five hours but in realistic watercolor painting the amount of time to get more realistic look just grows i have a limit of time to show you the approach you can go deeper into process you can go deeper into detailing everything is possible returning back to the green stem adding again finer brush strokes
for the last time which is more complicated with, with different details i will show you the approach i will not be showing you the whole painting process of the stem but the approach is that you are paying the same attention to the details as this would be a flower you are looking at each curve each section like this would be a, a flower or a peony or a rose it's all about seeing exploring the reference how are all those curves and folds created where is the darks where are the lights how shadows react how everything is connected we are not just blindly repeating what is shown on the tutorial you can pause the video take a look at the reference really zoom in the area that you are painting and think of each section why it is darker why it is lighter where the light is coming from how it's reflecting on the surface there's no some kind of magic technique it's more about looking and seeing what you are doing thinking what you are doing starting with water layer then with the very transparent green watercolor mix and when the surface is completely dry i start to add shadow areas in this reference we can see a very beautiful and interesting part of the stem exploring constantly looking at reference it's always like that the more we look the more we start to see analyzing how is that going where why it is lighter there and why it is darker there creating the three-dimensional look the volume brush strokes gradually transparently building that three-dimensional look gradually without any rush spend as much time as you need for the stamps as you would for the main painting you will only benefit the whole composition will benefit if you will have a really worked through stems or some kind of secondary sections which very often beginner artists think that they're not so important not so visible but you can a perfectly painted flower can be ruined with a poorly painted stem that is the rule you should always remember if you want your painting to look realistic accurate and neat
but this time working more with a drier brush because there are so many little details and very fine lines so there are no place for too much watery washes but again i'm mixing these both techniques more finer brush strokes and after some layers i apply over the whole area more watery layer with transparent watercolors and using round synthetic brush to get a more smoother and more natural look Now that I have the whole composition done, I'm adding last details, last brush strokes, looking at the whole composition in my reference photos and adding last details to see and compare the contrast between lights and darks. Hope you learned something new from this lesson and enjoyed this lesson as much as I did. I also learned something new so grateful for you to be here to follow more tuto my tutorials thank you for watching and see you in my next lessons thank you bye bye